All right, welcome back to the East Carolina Pirates Dynasty. We are here, and we uh, unfortunately have to start it off with some bad suspension news. Um, our right tackle, Matt Morgan, has been suspended for the rest of the year due to a drug violation. So, apparent, we obviously have some kind of problem with that in our organ in our organization these players I don't know what happened under the prior administration but we we just can't have it happen anymore we have to set the tone straight so unfortunately Matt was off to a good year sophomore year but now we got to put Jack Doyle and we're very thin now because we already lost Bailey Malovich and now we lost Matt Morgan and we're gonna have to replace him with Jack Doyle a junior he's he can do it it's just he's a little less rated but you know we'll see what we can do there um, like I said these two guys are done so for the year I know Malovich is gone for good so we'll get Matt Morgan back next year and hopefully he learns from his lesson um, one other thing to note is academically Demetrius Monty He's good. He did it. He did what he needed to. And now he's in good standing. He worked his butt off in the classroom. <clears throat> That's a testament to what he thinks about this season. He could have just given up and said, I don't care if I play. But he didn't. You know, we're four and three. So obviously not the great start that we wanted. But it's still a pretty good start for this team. Especially coming off how we ended last year. And then... Reed Herring, our, one of our backup quarterbacks, I, uh, he put a lot of extra time in the, the classroom. And because of that, I have to adjust his awareness down. Ugh, 24 points. But he needed to. He was getting close to being in trouble. I think he had like a 1.9 1. 1. GPA or something. So it was very teetering on being in trouble academically. So we'll have to adjust his awareness here drop that down 24 points so this is a 84 so it's just down to a 60 now <clears throat> that's really gonna affect his ratings because awareness is huge for quarterbacks so yeah he's all the way down to a 60 now but but you know we're not just a school that cares about it what goes on on the field we care about what happens off the field in the classroom and we're gonna keep stressing it and keep telling these people you know there's just there's no room for this stuff to happen so all right that and we get into recruiting we got a little recruiting news we did have another signee well, let's check out who that was and we got Anthony Stanford visiting this week Lamar Swain, 71 overall. He's a Juco guy, but I think he's going to have instant impact next year for us. So <clears throat> we get to add him to the, the makeup of our team. Now, I'm hoping next week I'm about 200 points away from an upgrade. So I'm hoping we can get that done in our game against Temple so that I can scout these guys 100% after they commit so we'll have four guys be able to scout so we can see it'll be exciting to see if we got a gem or a bust hopefully some gems but we still have some remainder of these points to dole out <clears throat> anthony prince i think we got to go all the way max out here got to keep up with georgia state i'm not going to offer him a scholarship yet steve falk the third He's already maxed out. I want to give my son a scholarship. Some see that as an nepotism. I don't really care. He can do a lot for this program. Gotta get this and put this tight end in there too. Max him out. Lance Goodwin. Let's offer him a scholarship. That way if we get locked out, let's put another 30 points on him. And then we'll up him to 400. So most of the other guys have been 
maxed out and some scholarships offered. All right, so we got four guys committed to next year's East Carolina Pirates game, team, which is good. Can't add any more guys because we didn't have anyone else lock us out or anything. All we did was have, I want to check Anthony Stanford. He's visiting this Temple Week. And he's the only one visiting, I think. Yep. I'm his top school though, so if he likes what happened after this, 90% locked. If he likes it, chances are he's signing after this week, which is great news for us. We can get our middle linebacker. Because he's visiting NC State or next week, and we need, we can't have them take a huge jump. So <clears throat> if we can get some sacks with a linebacker, that'd be nice. Beat a higher ranked team, we can do that. Beat a conference team. So this game against Temple means a lot to this Anthony Stanford visit. All right, so that's where we're at with that. We'll get out of there. And now we're gonna game plan for Temple here. Take a look at them, see what's going on. And the next episode, we'll get right into the Temple game. Well, Temple's gonna be tough, because defensively, I'm pretty sure they're pretty good. So let's take a look at their team here. Especially us coming off that tough loss to Memphis. Gotta find a way to turn it around here. Alright, so Temple. Anthony Russo. He's an impact player quarterback. Awareness 75 overall only. Oh, his throw power is. Throw actually 79. So, I think we're going to do a lot of mixing up pass coverages against him. So we'll bring some guys tight to the line, bring them out. They may be coming, they may be not coming. Try to confuse them and, you know, press the guys probably at least 75% of the time because his throw accuracy is not that great. So I'd like to try to make them fit it into tough spots. We'll see what guys they got though first because I'm not pressing guys that are like 96 speed because they'll blow past us. <clears throat> so, Yager Gardner. I wonder if Cal Dobbins is related to JK. I don't know. So they got decent running backs, nothing crazy, nothing that's gonna blow off the page here, but he is a senior, so I'm sure they're gonna try to incorporate him at some point. And they do utilize a fullback. Johnny Forrest is their guy. Wide receiver, Brandon Mack. So they just got some okay. Isaiah Wright is an All-American, though. Eighty-four overall. Randall Jones. So they don't have too many crazy wide receivers. They have three good, decent ones for sure. So, like I said, I think I'm still gonna go with that original game plan: mix in man and zone coverages, press them. Definitely gonna press them, make them fit those you know, balls into uh, tight spots there, and we'll see what we can do. Tight end, Kenny Yeboa, he's all right. Let's see what they'd have offensive line-wise. Isaac Moore's injured, ooh, baby. So they're playing with a backup left tackle. That's huge. Javon Fair is very good, though. Matt Hennessy's good. Right guard, right tackle. So they're weak at the tackle spots, but their left tackle is really weak. So we are going to attack the blind side of this quarterback. Because I don't think that we might be able to get pressure without even having to blitz, which will be nice. Uh, defensively, let's see. Forgot to check what they run. I think they run a 3-3-5 like us, though. I don't know why, but I think they do. Quincy Roche, he's decent. Zach Mezde. Defensive tackle. So they got a pretty good defensive line here. See what their linebackers are like. Sam Franklin's an impact player. They got a really good middle linebacker. And they got a good outside linebackers. So running the ball is going to be pretty tough against them. Cornerback, 
Okay, so there's definite impact. After the impact player here is an A, and there's definite drop off here. I don't know what their zone and man coverage is like. 83, they're not too bad. Around mid 80s. So I still think we're going to do a lot of crossing routes and ones where we can just sit in the zone on these guys because they're just. Ooh, free safety. And their free safety is not the best either. So we're going to mix in crossing routes, little hitch routes that sit inside zones, and then we're going to take some deep shots. We're going to attack this free safety. I think they run, like I said, let's see what kind of offense they run. Rod Carey, I believe, is the coach. Yeah, let's see what he runs. Alright, so they run a pro style offense, so that's cool. That's just a normal, normal style offense. And then they run a 4 3. Okay. So they're definitely going to be utilizing their front seven, is going to be stacked. So it's probably gonna be tough to run against them. But, so we're gonna try to utilize more of our passing game. We'll work in some runs, obviously, to keep them honest, but they're uh, they're gonna be pretty wise. So I think we'll try screens or anything like that, because their linebackers are probably gonna be ready for that. So I think we're definitely gonna try to do crossing routes, get them mixed up that way, find the holes in the zone, take a bunch of deep shots at that free safety. That's gonna be our game plan. All right, well that was our week 10 preview. And like I said, next game will be versus Temple before we go back on the road again. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next episode.